All right, guys. So I'm gonna start off with the short mix baguette. I'm gonna follow the recipe that's in your recipe packet. All right, and that one, it's a straight method and it's a short mix. Straight method meaning we're basically gonna put all the ingredients and mix them for the amount of time that we need. In this case, because it's short mix, we only need 600 revolutions per minute, which in all cases, I did kind of the math. So I'm gonna do four minutes on speed one and then four minutes on speed two, and that will be 600 revolutions. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off. Um, do a note, uh, the recipe calls for malt powder. I did not have malt powder. Um, what is malt gonna do in your bread? So there's two types of malt. You're gonna have diastatic and non-diastatic. So the non-diastatic, it's basically just gonna, it's like a sugar. It's basically just gonna give your bread a slightly sweet flavor. So it's only gonna enhance the flavor. As of the other one, um, it's full of enzymes and what these enzymes are going to do in your bread, um, these enzymes are going to start to more easily break down the complex sugar into more simple sugars and thus the yeast is going to feed off of the more simple sugar. So basically it's kind of like um, a yeast, yeast food, all right? So I did not have malt powder because I'm in my house, of course. Um, so just for flavor purposes, I did switch. Um, I added some of my sourdough just for flavor. Um, and what I did is I just adjusted my water measurements. Um, it was not a lot. I think it was probably 10% of the recipe. Um, but I added to my water, so it's right here. And the recipe doesn't call, I, I believe it doesn't call for a temperature on the water, but just for the sake of it, this water is, I'm just not taking it, it's 80, 80 degrees. So it's not gonna do a, a super fast job, but it's not gonna be super slow. Um, it will, it is gonna ferment for, uh -huh, three hours with three folds. So I don't want it to act too quickly. Like I wouldn't want to add water above 90, but if I add water that it's too cold, then it's gonna definitely be more than those three hours. So 80, 85 should be good. So that is my water and my sourdough. Uh, here goes my yeast. Okay, I'm gonna hold out the salt a little bit, my flour. And again, that was just a matter of timing correctly, right? Because we wanna make sure that we do that short mix. So I'm gonna turn it on. Whoops, other side. Speed one, four minutes. Alexa, puedes poner un temporizador de cuatro minutos? All right, so we're done with the four minute speed stir or one. I'm gonna set speed two. Now the four minutes, I already have my, um, my timer going on. Right. Four minutes, speed two. And this is how our dough looks. It's a little bit sticky, it's fine. Um, again, the difference now, as opposed to what you guys have been doing at school so far, it's that at this point, you would go ahead and try to make a window paint test. And if there's not, not enough gluten developed, then you would just continue to mix, right? Until you pass that window test. Um, not the case, guys. Now, again, this is something that you have to pay attention on times. And if the recipe call for a short mix, that's 600 which is per minute, knowing your, your, the type of mixture that you're using, you can calculate your times from there. So at this point, this dough is ready. It's, it has mixed for what do you, whatever the amount um, set, of course. And unfortunately, every mixer is gonna be different because they're all are gonna do um, different revolutions per minute depending on the style. Um, remember the spiral mixers do more revolutions per minute. Um, so those ones are gonna mix faster, right? So this is gonna be our dough. I'm just gonna take it out and I'm gonna put it into a, and again, 
there is some gluten development, but there's not a lot. It's not completely fully developed. And if you recall our lecture or go back to the part point, and it does state that um, gluten is underdeveloped, but more gluten is gonna be developed once we do the, the stretches, all right? So at this point, we're gonna just cover this container with our dough with a lamp, damp uh, towel. And we are going to let it ferment for another three hours, all right? So it's gonna give it, we're gonna give it a fold every hour, all right? I'm just making sure that it's a little bit tight and I'll, I'll show you the the folding how you how are you supposed to do the folds right just gonna leave it like that and again I'm gonna cover this with a damp towel make sure um, it doesn't dry out on this uh, the surface otherwise it's gonna create a thin skin that it's really not desirable so that's it we're gonna move to the second dough right. on to the second um, baguette which is an improved mix so it's gonna mix for a little bit longer all right um, and if you remember the difference and the reason why I wanted to do this recipe also it's because it does contain a pre-ferment which is a polish I do remember this bad boy um, we made it yesterday at 8 30 p.m. it's now um it's been 14 hours 14 hours so you should have develop a, a a really good flavor all right um i'm gonna put it closer to you guys so i don't know if you can see the bubbles but i don't want to tip it over um but it's very nice and bubbly definitely smells smells good so i personally like to put my weight ingredients in first that would be my pre-ferment and my water and i'm going to add the yeast to it in the case you were wanting to do an auto yeast remember auto yeast is mixing your hydrating your flour with the water for about 15 to 20 minutes or depending on the recipe and then adding the yeast and then adding the salt, all right? I'm not, I'm not really looking forward to doing that. So I put my pre-ferment, my polish, my, my water. I'm going to add my yeast to that. I'm just going to give it a quick whip. Just making sure all the polish is in there. Yeah. Now we're gonna add the flour and again the salt. I'm just gonna hold onto it for just a little bit on the pickup stage. Just trying to make things easier for the yeast, right? And doing the math, let me refer to my notes. Based on the notes, I am gonna do I'm gonna do four minutes on speed one or stir, and then I'm gonna do eight minutes speed two and that's going to give me a total of a thousand revolutions per minute using this specific kitchen room, right so alexa puedes poner un timer de cuatro minutos not if i don't have this all right mistakes mistakes it was barely on the pickup stage so i'm good i'm good in four minutes at speed stir i'm going to switch to speed two eight minutes all right it's been the eight minutes on speed two so that means we are ready and again um you might be tempted to do a window pane test the gluten as opposed to the short mix is more developed but it's not gonna again it's not gonna successfully do a window pane test and that's fine that's fine because this is gonna ferment for four hours and we're gonna do two folds, so we're gonna do a fold each two hours. So that's gonna basically finish developing the gluten, so we're good. And same thing, this is a spray bowl. Notice I am giving, it's a small batch, but I'm still giving a good amount of space for the dough to, to rise and for me to do the folds, All right? 
So let's get out of here. So again, a little bit more wooden, but not, not a crazy amount. All right, and then I'm just gonna make sure that it's a little bit nice. That way it kind of rises evenly before we do the, the bolts. Having your hands a little bit wet definitely works better. All right, but that's it. Now we're gonna leave the dough here. This one just has a cover. Voila. Um, so again, I'm gonna come back to it in two hours, do a fold. Now two hours, do another fold, and then this one would be shaped and then proofed and then baked. This is the, so it's time to fold this one. A little bit more spray this time. All right, so you see how we um, expanded and grew a little bit. Um, for all these purposes, I'm just gonna spray my hands. All right, so when you fold it, you want to lift it up, stretch it a little bit, and fold it over. All right. So you are trying to take care of the, the CO2 that has been created. It's a little bit sticky. It smells good. gonna do this one was not super tough but that's basically it all right so you stretch lift lift and stretch a little bit and fold it over and you do the same all right so I'm not gonna film the entire me doing the every single fold um but just know that for this one again it's missing two folds one each hour and this one it's gonna ferment for two hours a fold every two hours all right after that we're gonna divide we're gonna pre-shape shape and then do the final proof all right it's been already three hours three folds all right so you can see it's nice and puffy kind of actually doubled in size um, so now it's time to divide it, pre-shape it, shape it, pan it, and leave it resting more time for the final fermentation, right? So for shaping it, I'm just going to again, oops, this is, just going to fold it. I am going to put some flour on my surface. All right. So I don't know if you can tell, but do you remember this one had very, very little gluten development? It has way more, right? You know what the folding and the resting is. So all right, it's rather a wet dough, so it's using deliberate amount of flour. All right. We now are gonna divide it. I can't make too long baguettes because I only have a half sheet, like my oven will only feed half sheep in. So I'm not gonna make them super, super long. Let's go with, what do you think?
is the other dough. Still needs the second fold. All right, so now it's time to pre-shape. And why are we calling it pre-shape and not just rounding? Because not all the time is it a pre-shape of a round. We are gonna pre-shape as a batard. I also call it burrito, whatever. I'm kidding, it's called batard. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna stretch it, you're, kind of, you're basically trying to do a square. And I'll bring the camera forward right now. And then you're just gonna do one, two. All right, and so the batard closer. Just gonna stretch it. Again, you're not trying to like completely deflate it, rather just trying to stretch it and you're just gonna do one, two. That's it. It's not gonna, again, it's not gonna look perfect, but um, that's fine. This is just a pre-shape. Once we do all pre-shapes, we have to let them rest a little bit. So because, I mean, if it's a very large batch, then once you're done with the last one, you can go and do the final shape on the first one. But since it's a small batch, um, that's not the case. I'm just going to do the final fold on my, um, the lean dough that we did with the pleash. See how nice and fluffy it is. Oof. Smells like the bakery. It's good. I know it's weird, but smells are important. That's why I smelling everything right all right so this is good another two hours all right like i said these are not going to be super large baguettes because i don't have a super large pan this is whatever fits the oven so Over the first one. I feel like I need space. Okay. A little flour will stick too much and you make a mess. So for the final shape of the baguettes, we're gonna take one of our batards, lay it seam side up. Kind of doing the same thing. Again, you're not trying to completely press them and push them down. You're trying to, with your fingertips, just make a square. And now you remember when we did the batard, we basically do two folds without sealing them and we put them aside. Now you're gonna do two and the third one you're gonna seal. So one, two, and the third one is just to seal, right? You wanna make sure, um, a lot of people go like this to make sure it's sealed. 
you're gonna end up with something like this and now you're gonna stretch it out now when you're stretching it out um i like to leave the middle a little bit fatter and then i go i apply more pressure to elongate this part and then at the end i just taper the ends really i just really like to accentuate the ends so once we have it like this Again, I'm gonna spray it with some water um, that way it proofs nicely, and then I'll be back so we can score them and bake them. They're gonna take about another hour for so. and about 40 minutes, and now we're just gonna score our bread. It's been proofed. Now, when you're scoring bread, you don't wanna neither you wanna hold it at an angle, you don't wanna just go like 90 degrees. It also depends on the type of knife you're using, but you want to just slide it across, leave long markings, and that's it. Now we're going to go, I'm going to spray them a little, with a little bit more water, um, just because it's very ideal that this type of bread, like the baguettes, um, gets steam, but of course I'm using a home oven. You can also put a sheet pan in the very bottom of the oven and as you put them in you throw water and that will create steam um problem is i only have this to trace so i'm just gonna sprinkle some water on top and hopefully that is enough steam so so ready it's been four hours you can see it's very very puffy what So let's take it out and let's portion it. Whoops. Let's portion it out. So you can definitely, definitely see right away the difference in the mixing. Um, Remember, the short mix had very little gluten development as opposed to this one. Look at that. How stretchy it is. All the, the structure of it is just so, so different. Not just because it's a different recipe, but just because um, the gluten is very different. All right, so... Same thing. Pre shape first. One and two. That's the baton, right? One, two. Another baton.
gonna do one, two, three. Remember the three is for really sealing it and then you just stretch. Center. Right. This one is very ugly. So we're gonna spray them, and we'll wait for them to proof. Again, about another hour. We'll score and we'll bake.